There's not even me in Bowers Game Corner. Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review and a special Kickstarter review. And today I'm very excited to be checking out Shibboleth from Illuminate Inc. This is for two to four players. Take about 10 to 20 minutes to play. And it's for ages 8 plus. And in Shibboleth, there is a revolution. And there's good guys in the revolution. And there's bad guys in the revolution. And this is a uh, very similar game to Love Letter. It is a micro S game where you're going to be drawing one card and then having a hand of two cards and playing one of those two cards from time to time you're going to be trying to guess what are other people's hands and manipulating other people's hands but this one adds a unique twist as there will also be three special abilities out there that will score you extra bonus points or if you knock them out give you extra bonus points what am i talking about let's open it up and check it out Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Shibboleth. Before we get started, I do want to mention this is the promotional copy I have in front of me. Just take everything you see here with a grain of salt. So Shibboleth is going to be a very simple micro S game that is very much like Love Letter. In the aspect that on your turn, you're going to have one card in your hand, you're going to draw one card, and then you're going to play one card. And then those cards are going to do various different actions, and you're hoping to knock out other players. Now this has an extra layer to it as you're going to be going through a revolution and so there will be uh, three cards out on the table put out there randomly you'll have like the heroes of the revolution supporters of the revolution and then enemies of the revolution and the added twist is if you're able to eliminate someone who has an enemy of the revolution you're going to gain bonus points and if you survive the round survive the revolution with either the hero or um, the the friend of the revolution, then you'll also gain bonus points in addition to the points on your card. So we'll go over the components, and then we'll get a little bit into gameplay. So first and foremost, we're gonna handy dandy little rule sheet. It's about seven eight pages, uh, double sided, all text, and it's not very well done at this state. I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I told them there's quite a few problems with this. They need to make some tweaks here and there. And honestly, all the problems could probably be fixed by about two sentences and like seven or eight words here or there. I gave them all my suggestions, and uh, I, I have a feeling it's probably going to fix a lot of stuff in here. But by the time it gets to you, it should be a very well done rule booklet. That being said, the gameplay itself is very simple. So, card wise, you're going to get a deck of these cards right here. And as you can see, they have absolutely gorgeous artwork on them. They're going to have numbers, values 0 through 8, with 6 being missing, which I thought was very odd, but there is no 6 in this deck. So, uh, not sure why that is. Maybe it's thematic. Not quite sure. What you're going to do is you are going to shuffle up the cards. And then you are going to take one card off to the side randomly, so you'll never have perfect information. And then you're going to deal three cards into the center and deal one card to each player, and then you will be ready to play. And on your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to draw one card, and then you're going to play one card. Now, you may notice that there's no information on any of the cards. They chose to not put that on there, I'm assuming for the sake of the gorgeous artwork. But luckily, everyone is going to have one of these handy-dandy little cheat cards in front of us. So we can look and see we have number four and number seven we have the artist trade hands with another player or choose two other players to switch hands so if you play this card uh, you would get to do that number seven must be discarded if you have or draw an intellectual artist card um and it also says right here how many points the card is going to be worth at the end of the round if you're alive and how many cards are in the deck so there's only two artists in your hand so Right now, we drew a uh, we we did draw an artist card, which means we have to get rid of the wealthy card. So we would play this right here. We would not do any special effects, and then this would go in front of us so everyone could see exactly what we played. Now. This is valuable information for other people, especially if they're paying attention, because they might be like, ooh, I betcha he might have just drawn an intellectual or artist card, because there are some cards in here where, uh, much like Love Letter, where you will try and guess what's in someone else's hand. So let's pretend this is the other guy's hand, and let's see what he's got going on here. He has an artist and an artist, so obviously he's going to play the artist. So he would play the artist in front of him like so, and then he would take the artist ability right here. Trade hands with another player or choose two other players to switch hands. In a two-player game, obviously, boop, we would switch hands, and <laughs> we'd probably have a good laugh about that because we just switched the exact cards. But that's not necessarily the best move for this player right now. Oh, glare like crazy. Because what's going to happen is he's going to be able to see, so he got himself, ooh, the gorillas. And the gorillas' special ability is that 
guess what card a player has. If you were correct, that player is knocked out of the round. So this round would come to a screeching halt right now as he would most likely go ahead and play the gorillas. And bada boom, he'd guess, I think you have an artist because he knows that for a fact. This player would get knocked out of the hand and then this player would be the winner of the round. So let's go over here a little bit how the scoring works. So we'd look at the scoring and we would say, all right, I'm going to end this round with four victory points. And since this person is not out here, this person would get four victory points and that would be the end of the round. There are only going to be three circumstances in which players are going to score. So let's go over those. First and foremost, like you just saw, if you knock everybody out of the round, then you get your points. Nobody else gets any points at the end of the round. Next, if more than one people end the round, then they all get their points. And I do want to point out the fact that if we had had the gorilla or the wealthy, we would have gained bonus points. So for instance, if our last card in our hand would have been the gorilla, despite the fact it would have given us zero points, it in actuality would have gave us five points because he would have been the hero of the revolution. Likewise, we would have had a wealthy person in our hand. Instead of getting seven points, we would have eight points. If we had middle class, it wouldn't do anything um, unless we got knocked out. The third and final way to score, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, but I'll just bring it up right here, you can score in the middle of the round if you knock out someone who happens to be the enemy. Uh, but let's go over what all the different card abilities do, and uh, other than that, that's how Shibboleth is played. So we talked about the Gorilla, because what he's going to do is make it so that uh, you get to guess. You have the Working Class, discard one card from the deck to the discard pile. Uh, middle class, you are immune to the effects of other cards until your next turn. The scientist, compare your hands with an opponent. Choose whether the highest or lowest value card is discarded before comparing. The artist, trade hands with another player or choose two other players to switch hands. The intellectual, look at another player's hand and choose to let them keep the card or discard it. Wealthy, we already talked about. And then we also have the royalty, which much like in uh, Love Letter, if you have to discard the royalty, you automatically are knocked out of the round. But that, in a nutshell, is how Shibble... Oh, and last but not least, of course, you'll play uh, normally four or five rounds to see who has the most points at the end of the five rounds. Whoever does will be the winner of Shibboleth. That, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. All right, and then Shibboleth from Illuminate, Inc. Coming to a Kickstarter you very, very soon. I'll be sure to post that Kickstarter link down below. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros. Let's go over the cons. First on the con side, game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. Two to four players, er, very restricted player count. Also, this is a micro game, which means you're not going to have the meatiest, deepest of choices, but you, you really can't expect that with a micro game. Another thing is, this is a very repetitive game. You're going to be doing the same things over and over and over again. You're going to draw a card, then you're going to play a card, then you're going to draw a card, then you're going to play a card, then you draw a card, then you're going to play a card, and then you're going to do that four more rounds. And that's going to be a turn off to some people. Um, very samey feel on that. Also, it bugs me that there's no six. Why is there no six? You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. I want a six. Uh, maybe that's a potential stretch goal or a Kickstarter expansion. Who knows? But it really bugged me a little bit that there was no six, and it shouldn't have bugged me. Now, moving on to the game itself. Um, graphic design-wise, some people are going to disagree with this. This is my personal opinion. I wish that so there was some text on the cards telling you what the cards did. Because while the handy-dandy cheat sheet cards are very useful, uh, I still would just like to have it on the card. Also because the text on these cheat sheet cards is very, very tiny. Now I understand why they did not do that. And that is because I'm assuming because the artwork is absolutely freaking gorgeous. They don't want to interrupt that artwork. So I understand that uh, opinions are going to vary on that sort of thing. Now, also, last con, the rule booklet in its current state is in its current state is not good. It's not a good rule booklet right now. It's a very small rule booklet. It could be easily fixed. Uh, so I would make sure that the rule booklet is fixed before you back this. Because it's a very simple game, but I had so many questions after the first time I played. I was like, okay, does this do this? Is a knockout the same as getting, you know, discarded? How does this work? It could be easily fixed, but I would make sure it gets fixed before you back it. Any other cons I have with the game? You know, I am going to do the obvious comparison to Love Letter, and I will say I like some of the special ability or some of the cards' abilities in Love Letter better than I like some of them in this game. So that is something that I do want to mention. But moving on to the pros, Shibboleth, if you like micro games, is fantastic. It is just that simple. And I will say this: I love Love Letter. I've played it over a hundred times. I like this game better, personally. Uh, it's more of a gamery game, in my opinion. Now, why do I like it better? So, there's one obvious, there's two obvious reasons. First, this game doesn't suck at two players. Love Letter, if you ever played it two players, 
you probably did it once because you realize, wow, this is really bad at two players. This game is not bad at two players. I actually enjoyed this at two players. Also, I like the aspect of having the cards out in the middle. You have the hero, you have the supporters, and then you have uh, the bad guy. So uh, even if you might get knocked out of a round, you can still potentially score points if you can sniff out who might have a bad guy and knock them out. And I like that aspect. Also, that adds like this extra little layer to this game where normally you'd be like, all right, I want to keep this eight in my hand because if I survive, it's going to be worth eight points. But if there's a four out on the board and a four is a hero, a four is like, ooh, that four is a really nice option, you know, because if I can keep this four in my hand, that's going to be worth nine points if I survive. And I like that. Um, I do. I like this game. I would love to see some more cards into it. But for the time being, Shibboleth is a very, very good micro game that I can highly recommend as long as they fix that rule booklet. So Shibboleth from Illuminate and Ink, if you're in the market for a micro game, definitely you want to check this one out. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below or in the comments below. Let me know, micro machines, did you have them as a kid? I used to love micro machines. Looking back at them, I'm like, what, what was the big deal? Why did I like micro machines? Why didn't I just want regular sized cars? But yeah, I had an obsession with micro machines when I was a kid. Did you? Did you like Polly Pocket if you're a lady? Or uh, they used to have the, what was it, the Polly Boy, where it was like his own little Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle house, and it was just like the size of like a pillbox? Man, that was so cool. Let me know in the comments below. Micro toys. Did you like them when you were a kid? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.